Hey guys, today we're going to beat Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep without attacking. And I'll save you all some time. You cannot beat Birth by Sleep without attacking. It's impossible. We must attack in Land of Departure. Terra and Ven can kill most of the enemies that we fight, but Aqua must do the final hit. However, this is the tutorial, so I'm a bit apprehensive about counting Land of Departure. For those of you that are going to stick around, as you still want to see the madness of this challenge even though it's impossible, thank you. Let's first discuss exactly how restrictive this challenge is. I cannot use regular attacks by pressing the X button to swing the Keyblade. This is not allowed. No battle commands are allowed, so anything in this area won't be allowed, just like my no attack commands video. I was considering using cure or items, but decided against it since I crave pain. No dealings are allowed and no shot locks are allowed because we know how powerful those are from my prior two videos. And those are my very restrictive rules that I'm using. I do have some more bad news. I failed the challenge again. There is no way to get through Castle of Dreams without attacking. We are able to run all the way to the Jacques Escort at the end of the level, but you can't make it through the Escort using our restrictions. Don't worry guys, it's going to get good in a minute, I swear. I did come up with another rule during the Escort though. The pseudo-reaction commands that we get from allied characters are allowed. Given how difficult this challenge is, I'm allowing it. As for the boss we have to attack, there is no way around it yet. And now we are in the Dwarf Woodlands and the challenge officially starts as we are now given the tools to beat Burke by sleep without attacking. After taking away all of those ways to attack, we are basically armed with nothing as we don't have access to most of the things in our deck. The challenge includes not using any battle commands. But that leaves us with all of the action commands at our disposal. In particular, two very important action commands will aid us in this challenge. The first action command is Payback Surge. Aqua can get it from behind the house in Dwarf Woodlands as we enter the level. The way this command works is that when Aqua is knocked back by an enemy, if we press the square or dodge button, she will lunge back at the enemy and damage them. This counterattack reprisal could be one of our prime ways of attacking enemies and bosses, but in order to use it we must get hit from a big enemy to have Aqua get knocked back. The problem is that getting knocked back will damage Aqua and we will die before killing any boss with this strategy alone. However, in the case of grinding in this level, which we will have to do, we can easily just run back to the castle and return to this group of enemies to grind. I'll talk about grinding in a bit though. The second action command is Counter Blast, which is insanely more useful as we don't have to take any damage to attack. To use this command, you just need to get hit when you have your shield up and Aqua will do a counter attack. Aqua can find this command in Radiant Garden, but that is all the way in Radiant Garden and we need a strategy for now. Therefore, we will have to use another strategy before we can rely on Counter Blast to kill enemies and even so, Counter Blast doesn't do a ton of damage so it's not our end goal. But all hope is not lost. If we travel to Maleficent's world and look in the Moogle shop, fire commands will now be unlocked for us to buy. We need to buy a minimum of three fire commands so that we can make Faraga. We need Faraga. This is very necessary for the way that I am tackling this challenge. You can not buy fire commands in the Moogle shop from Cinderella's world or Snow White's world. You will need to get trapped in Maleficent's dungeon to buy fire commands. Luckily, we can run straight there without having to attack anyone. This means that we will have to equip fire spells in the deck and farm experience for the fire commands using Payback Surge. I'm not using the fire commands, but they are in the deck for when I go to farm. We need to level up the fire commands to make Faraga and the only way of doing that is to have them equipped in the deck and use Payback Surge to defeat enemies. Guys, killing enemies using only Payback Surge is not fun. I did this for about 10 minutes and I just couldn't. It's so long and boring to kill enemies with Payback Surge that I was going crazy. You're waiting a bunch and the actual experience you get is not a lot so you will have to do this move thousands of times. 
I'm sure it's literal thousands. You can quote me on that. Plus, you have to run all the way back to a save point to refill health as Payback Surge only activates when you take damage. I then had the wonderful idea to maybe level up the commands in the command board. Well, this is worse than what I was currently doing. The experience I got was decent, but for the time invested, it was also not worth it. I'm not proud of what I did next, and you guys can count this as another failure if you want. It's theoretically possible to get Faraga leveled up all the way, but I just couldn't do it. This is why my footage up to now shows me using fire and fission Faraga commands. I ended up giving up on melding Faraga and decided to level up fission Faraga since it would take less time. Fission Faraga will do the same job that Faraga would have done but it'll take less time to get it to max level. If you use a sliding dash, you can get one outside of the castle. What I ended up doing for over an hour with Fission Faraga and the various fire commands was grind in the castle. In the interest of time and my sanity, I did this. You don't have to do it. You can level up the fires in your command deck with Payback Surge. It'll just take hours. However, after my long time of grinding, I finally had a Fission Faraga spell that was ready to be melded. Why did I use spells and fail the challenge again? The reason being that Fission Faraga melded with a cartwheel command will give us the all-powerful ability Fire Wheel. You could also use a regular Faraga to make Fire Wheel, which is why I was trying to do it, but it's even longer than a max level Fission Faraga. I have been trying my best to not talk about Firewheel for a bit as I was trying to build some anticipation for the big reveal. Firewheel is the main reason this challenge is doable, or at least doable at this point in the game. It grants Aqua some invincibility frames, damages opponents, and it's technically not an attack so the rules allow it. Interestingly enough, I went up a ton of levels trying to level up Vision Faraga to meld Firewheel. Due to that, I was very overleveled for the Magic Mirror. The way this playthrough is going to work now is that for literally every enemy and boss encounters, we are going to spam Firewheel to kill them. Simple as that. I also discovered a cool trick during the Magic Mirror fight. If you lock onto an enemy and press the dodge button whilst holding down the forward button, Aqua will go directly toward the target she's locked onto. You don't even have to know where the enemy is in relation to Aqua, as you can just hold forward and the game will do all the work. We will use this for every opponent as this saves us a lot of time. Also, for the rest of the playthrough, I won't need to level up any attack command since we actually have a way to damage opponents now. Next, we can return to Maleficent's dungeon to escape with Philip. Getting through all of the minions is very easy now that Aqua is leveled up a lot and Firewheel will one-shot the pigs. I also discovered that Firewheel works on these wheels for the drawbridge, which is really cool as this could have helped with my dealings only or shot looks challenge. Anyways, now we can fight the Maleficent Dragon. Guys, the lack of difficulty of this fight is astounding and never ceases to amaze me. It took me less than 30 seconds to win. Since we leveled up a ton to get Firewheel, we are super overpowered for Maleficent or maybe she is just super weak to Firewheel. Using my knowledge of this fight, I know that we don't have to attack her head. She takes damage no matter where you hit her on the body. I really don't have any words to describe the madness that occurred here. Maleficent didn't even get any time to fly away, which she usually does, and we beat Maleficent without attacking her. Next, we are in the Radiant Garden. The fight with Nikki is fine until we have to fight the flying enemies. Flying enemies can be killed with Firewheel. They are just super annoying since Firewheel can't make Aqua travel in the air. When we have to fight Trinity Armor, I was very surprised with how well Firewheel worked on him. This legit is the strategy that I am using for the rest of the game. I'm not lying. I hope you guys don't mind me recycling the strategy over and over again. I'm all for going green, both with the environment and video games. At the start of the fight, I was able to do a lot of damage over a short amount of time. Usually when Trinity Armor does his attacks where he moves in a circle at the center of the arena, we would have to run in a circle until he finished his attack, but thanks to Firewheel, we can constantly damage him during this animation which helps save time. Later in the fight when he disassembles into separate pieces, the lack of difficulty is still there, 
but it takes longer. Somehow, we are able to damage the propeller despite it being in the air way above Aqua. Overall, this fight wasn't as hard as it usually is. Within 3 minutes of this fight starting, and some waiting at the end for the boss to finish spinning, I was able to do my final cartwheel and end the fight. After finishing Radiant Garden, I decided to go to Disney Town and then Olympus. When fighting with Hercules, I noticed something very interesting. I saw that we were not doing a lot of damage with Firewheel anymore, so Aqua definitely needed to level up. However, because we are in the second half of the game, we can buy an Esuna command and a Barrier command. I hope you guys know where I'm going with this. When we meld them together, they make a Renewal Barrier. We will need this command, and luckily we don't have to level up Esuna or Barrier to meld it. This will be the only way of healing in this challenge. Anyways, I went to Deep Space to level up. There was no way of clearing the Colosseum tournament with the current damage output of Firewheel. At least in Stitch's world, we don't have a time limit. I ended up fighting in Stitch's world just leveling up for about an hour and a half, and it's honestly not that bad grinding with Firewheel. Anyways, I felt good enough to fight Gantu, and I may have gone overboard with leveling up again. He does not have any fire resistance like a future boss in this video. That means he will take massive damage from fire wheel and he doesn't have any long invulnerability phases like a future boss. So as long as we are next to him, he'll die within a minute. And now it's time to return to Olympus and do the tournament. Beating the tournament is actually doable with fire wheel even though we can't attack. Of all of the fights in the Colosseum, round 4 was the hardest. There are a total of 7 enemies, but 3 of them are lightning unversed. The problem is that they don't take a lot of damage from fire wheel for some reason. It's not a problem as I was able to win on my first try, but this is the only fight in the tournament that I was really close to losing in due to the timer. The Zack fight was very easy and honestly became a literal meme for me. Aqua is just so hot that Zack doesn't know what to do when he sees her movement. I didn't know that we could stagger poor Zack like this. All you have to do is stay locked onto him whilst holding forward and spamming the dodge button. And you can do this too. This is very easy to do and it's a lot of fun to cheat the game like this. And the Hades and Ice Titan are actually one of the harder bosses in the game. Hades does have some fire resistance as Fire Wheel will not do a lot of damage to him. He takes damage but not at the level of other enemies or bosses. He also doesn't stagger which is just as important as him having fire resistance. So there will be some problems during this fight, as I did lose a few times. What you want to do is not attack the Ice Titan and if you do, do not kill the Ice Titan. We need him alive. Luckily for us we did get Renewal Barrier and it's specifically for this fight. When you lose too much health just retreat to the front of the Ice Titan and let him refill your health. This strategy works and is the reason that we let the Ice Titan live. Fire Wheel will eventually kill Hades and when you take damage from attacking him, which you will, Ice Titan will refill your health using Renewal Barrier. You need to go after Hades in this fight and only stop to heal. Hades hits hard and you will take damage. Those partial invincibility frames from Fire Wheel are taking a vacation in Thebes right now, so you won't be able to dodge most of Hades' attacks. It's possible, but we can't rely on Firewheel in this fight to dodge. It's not too hard though, it's just long. And now we are in the penultimate world, Neverland. There is absolutely nothing to report here. I did spend about an hour leveling up in preparation for Vanitas, but getting through the world is easy since we can literally run to the end of it. As for Vanitas, the fight was harder than his Hollow Bastion fight. He hits harder and he likes to teleport a lot more than when we fought him in Hollow Bastion. You shouldn't ever be in danger of dying here though. The first part of the fight was just random. I used Firewheel and there was some give and take of him damaging me and me damaging him. As for the second part of the fight, this was very interesting. I'm legitimately not sure why my strategy worked here, but it does. I don't know if I hit his revenge value or if he always does his 5 second counter attack when I attack him, but he does. All I do is keep attacking him after he finishes teleporting, and he'll then do a downward thrust from the air to the ground. Every time I cartwheeled to him, he did a downward thrust attack, and then I just repeated this until he died. 
I don't know if this is a glitch or if it's supposed to go like this, but it does. Granted, I don't think the developers of the game intended for us to beat Vanitas by using only fire wheels, so they may not have programmed any counterattacks to defend against the fire wheel spam. But using the fire wheel spam to beat Vanitas without attacking works. And finally, we are in the Keyblade Graveyard and we get to fight Rag. I did spend about two more hours leveling up in the tornadoes in preparation for the final two fights, and it may have barely been enough. Renewal block helps with Brag, but it's not needed. There is really nothing to Brag's fight, as there are only two things that Brag does during this fight. When Brag is on the ground, use Firewheel to get close to him so that you can damage him. When Brag is in the air, he'll do two attacks. If he shoots you, use Barrier to reflect the bullets. If he doesn't shoot at you with the bullets that you can reflect, then wait for him to come to the ground and then attack. Firewheel is the main way that we will use to damage Brag. We can reflect his bullets, but the real damage comes from Firewheel. Overall, not a very difficult fight. The Ventus Venitas fight will be the hardest fight in the game for us, like always. Like most of my challenges I do at Aqua, I died quite a lot during this fight. The thing about Firewheel is that it does have invincibility frames, but it's not as much as the regular cartwheel, so you can still get damaged. The timing is just more precise with Vanitas. And one of the things that super sucks about this fight is the Mickey attack. I'm happy for when we can use the reaction commands where Mickey will let us be invulnerable and spin to damage Vanitas. However, given this type of challenge where we can only dodge to attack and the fact that the way to use the reaction command is to hit the dodge button, we will not be able to choose if we want to cartwheel or to use the reaction command. This doesn't sound like a huge problem and it's not, but it's still a problem. One of Vanitas' moves is to go into the center of the arena and crouch there for a few seconds. During this time, we can do a lot of damage to him with Firewheel compared to the entire fight, so we will want to seize this moment. But that's if the game would let us. Mickey might just decide to let us use his reaction command during that time. You want to avoid taking damage as much as you can during this fight, as things can go south quickly if you aren't careful. Firewheel doesn't guard against all of Vanitas' attacks unfortunately, but the fight is still possible. It may take a few tries and a couple of unfair deaths, but you can beat Vanitas without actually having to attack him. So can you beat Kingdom Hearts Brit by Sleep without attacking? No. We are forced to attack in Land of Departure and Castle of Dreams. The only thing that I personally didn't like that I did, though I'd do it again, is attack in the Dwarf Woodlands. All the commands that I used there were specifically to level up Fire and Vision for Aga for Firewheel. Usually I'm okay with grinding for hours, but I couldn't do it in the Dwarf Woodland since we would have had to use Payback Surge to damage enemies for hours. Or, on the other end of the spectrum, we would have needed to spend hours playing in the command board. It is 100% possible to level up Fission for Aga or for Aga using Payback Surge or the command board. It just takes hours to do so. Even with me cheating and failing the challenge to level up Fission for Aga, it still took me over an hour to do so. Because you don't need to attack in the Dwarf Woodlands, and I did it, I'll consider this a failure. This challenge was actually a lot of fun to do though, and I recommend it if you are okay with putting in an hour of grinding to get Fission for Aga to max level. Getting that command leveled up is actually the biggest problem. Before this challenge, I never knew how strong Firewheel was or how durable it would have been against bosses. By far the hardest bosses were Hades and Ventus Vanitas in this run. I do hope you all enjoyed this video and please leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you have another challenge for me or questions about this challenge, feel free to ask, like the video and stuff and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching.